Welcome to the 2023 South Dakota Wildland Fire Potential. This is Darren Clay with the State Fire Meteorologist for South Dakota. And uh, this presentation was put together on April 21st, 2023. So we'll just talk a little bit about the wildfire climatology across the state. Uh, then we'll go into the forecast conditions for the next few months. And of course, uh, end with a summary of the fire potential for South Dakota. So remember when we talk about wildfire risk, that's really an environmental potential plus an ignition potential. And we can't forget that, you know, in order to get fires, we gotta have ignitions. You can have the driest summer ever, but if you don't get lightning and people are careful, we're not gonna get fires. And so just recognize when we're talking about risk, we have to include potential. And so I'm really talking about environmental potential uh, for this slide right here. Uh, we can deal with ignitions kind of more on a day-to-day -day and a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, it's kind of a busy slide, but it breaks the state down into its nine climate divisions. Northwest on the top left, southeast on the bottom right, and of course Black Hills on the left center, so you kind of orient yourself. It kind of breaks it down more or less what the state kind of looks like there. Um, on the left-hand chart, of, or the left-hand side of each graph, is the total number of acres burned basically in the past 30 years. Uh, and then we have month on the bottom. On the right-hand side, it's the number of fires. The number of fires will be read by the lines, and the acreage will be read by the bar graphs, and that's broken down between totals and lightning. Um, for the eastern side of the state, we're really already past peak fire season. It's really a March-April thing, um, and you know, th there has been quite a few red flag warnings, for especially southeastern South Dakota uh, this year. The east, east central and northeastern South Dakota had a lot more snowpack. Uh, but yeah, we're kind of cresting that. If we look at central and western South Dakota, um, it's really a summertime thing. You know, maybe July 4th through Labor Day weekend. Um, central Climate Division actually really peaks in the fall, at least for areas burned, not necessarily total numbers of fire. But yeah, so the focus for this presentation is really going to be our, our peak fire season for central and western South Dakota, which is the summer months. So what drives our wildfire potential during those months? Well, in June, across nearly all of Western and even Central South Dakota, we have to have drought. Now, why do we need drought for fires in June? Well, it's because June is typically one of the wettest months of the year. If it's the wettest month of the year, yeah, we're gonna need some drought because we can't have rain if you want wildfires. Um, you also need above average temperatures in the month of June and then short and long-term precipitation deficits. So kind of a dry May, getting into a dry June, some drought lingering. Once we progress into July, drought is still there. Uh, we need those longer term precipitation deficits because again, July is typically a green month for us. But if we do have those precip deficits and that drought conditions, we can dry out sufficiently enough to burn. In August, interestingly enough, drought really isn't a huge player, but short term precipitation deficits are. What that does is it leads to kind of an early curing of the grass. Uh, across the landscape and thus leading to more potential for wildfires in August. And note that above average temperatures are, are virtually required. So here's our departure from normal precipitation over the past year. Uh, this is nationwide. It's been pretty dry across the central and southern Great Plains. Um, but again, over South Dakota, those colors are really hovering, hovering on either side of average. It's, it's been a pretty average year. Last year, we did have drought, but that drought was really driven by high temperatures. Um, you know, it, 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 there weren't a lot of precip deficits across the state. Southeastern South Dakota, there was, but mostly it was just because of the sheer heat that we had last year that really drove that, those drought conditions. So this is our year-to-date departure from normal precipitation on the left, percent of normal precipitation on the right. Again, either side of average across South Dakota, it's, it's really it's a smattering, right? Northeastern South Dakota saw a lot of late winter, early spring snow. Northwestern South Dakota didn't see that snow and they really stayed dry, kind of the south half of the state, either side of average. So there are some dry pockets lingering around the state, uh, but we have been able to kind of claw our way out of uh, a lot of the drought that we did see um, coming out of 2022. Here's our departure from normal temperature for that same time frame, uh, year to date. And really, it's been, a, it's been a cooler than average late winter and spring. Uh, and I think that's pretty evident, uh, you know, just, just thinking about it. I mean, it, we haven't had really those big streaks of, of warm days like we might get in a normal year. 
Here's our calculated soil moisture anomaly. Uh, this is for last year, very dry soils uh, across the south half of the state going, extending all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And of course, California was exceptionally dry as well. Coming into this year at about the same time, you know, the Great Plains still pretty dry. We still have dry soils across central and southern South Dakota, including northwestern South Dakota. But man, yeah, you've probably heard about how much water the West Coast, uh, Western U.S. has been getting. Um, you know, all those atmospheric rivers piling up the snow in the Sierras, et cetera, which is a good thing for the Colorado River Basin, too, because, you know, a lot of this water is going to drain into the Colorado. Current drought monitor is the big chart down here. Um, there is some lingering drought across the state, nearly all of the states in abnormally dry conditions, some pockets of D1 and D2 drought, um, you know, in various places. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's less drought than we had at this time of the year last year. If we look at last year, you know, central and western South Dakota was seeing, you know, D1, D2, D3 drought conditions. But again, I want to stress that we are entering our wettest time frame. May, June, and July are our three wettest months. Uh, across, you know, central and western South Dakota. And um, it really, you know, it's like 50% of our annual precip falls during those three months. It's we're, our overall yearly precipitation is very dependent upon what we see in the next three months. Here's the drought monitor change um, for the entire U.S. and a lot of improvements um, across South Dakota and, and great improvements across the broader uh, western United States. So let's look at our outlook, uh, late spring through early fall. This is a May, June, and July ensemble forecast for temperatures and temperature probabilities. And these are all just different models that we that are, that are run to, to kind of um, forecast, you know, months ahead of time. And, and nearly all of them are showing warmer than average conditions persisting across the northern Great Plains, except for... This guy here showing cooler than average. Um, I would hedge my bets definitely towards above average temperatures in the May, June, July time frame. And again, when we talk about our climatic drivers, those above average temperatures can kind of tilt the scales to a more active fire season. However, um, the ensembles are showing a pretty average May, June, and July when it comes to overall precipitation. I, you know, there's no strong signals anywhere uh, showing one way or the other above or below average precipitation for the region. So it's, you know, probably an average late spring, early summer uh, moisture. And I'll talk about what average means in terms of fire potential here in a minute. Uh, this is the Climate Prediction Center's May, June, July uh, outlook. Temperature on the left, precip on the right. Uh, you know, they're kind of echoing some of these ideas that at least the southern and eastern part of the U.S., We'll likely see above average temperatures and across South Dakota, it's equal chances, which just means that, you know, hey, 33 percent below average, 33 percent average, 33 percent above average. Um, we're not seeing a strong uh, signal or they're not seeing a strong signal one way or the other. But like I said, I'd hedge my bets towards a warmer than average year. Precipitation wise, again, we're in that equal chances area for May, June, July. And here is our drought outlook going through the end of July. The CPC thinks that a lot of our drought is going to remain across the state. Uh, well, excuse me, improve across the state. So we're going to see some drought removal um, with maybe some pockets of drought remaining. And especially if we do kind of go towards those warmer than average conditions, we, we might see those drought pockets linger around longer than we want them to. Going out farther, this is July, August, and September. Um, again, these, this is temperature and nearly everybody except uh, this guy here is showing above average temperatures or high probabilities of above average temperatures. So I would definitely hedge my bets towards a warmer than average uh, late summer going into early fall. Precipitation, no strong signals one way or the other for above average or below average precipitation really anywhere across the United States, at least in kind of these um, longer range models. The Climate Prediction Center is on board for above average temperatures nearly everywhere across uh, the United States and um, maybe some above average precip across the lower Ohio and mid Mississippi River Basin. Looking at the outlooks from NIFC, um, this is their significant wildland fire potential outlook for May, lower than average potential across North Dakota with the heavy snowpack. 
I mean, I don't know if they're going to be able to get out and plant at all this year. Eggs going to take a hit just because how wet everything is up there. And then kind of across and west of the Four Corners region, below normal fire potential. Um, Texas, Florida, above average fire potential. Going into June, much of the same. Going into July, much of the same. Uh, you know, this right here, strongly due to the snowpack that they have out there, you know, the lower elevations could very well dry out, especially if they get another hotter than average summer. But again, with the snowpack and the higher elevations, deep snowpack and the higher elevations, they're going to see below, uh, below normal large fire potential. But because of the heat and the potential dryness across the pack northwest, they could see an uptick in fire potential uh, going into the midsummer. And let's compare this to last year. So this is last year's June outlook and last year's July outlook. Now, NIFSI was thinking and Predictive Services was thinking, you know, we were going to see a lot of big time fire activity. And, and as we all know, it, that did not happen at all. I mean, last year was epically slow when it came to wildfires. Um, rains were timely. It was hot, but rains were timely enough where we did just didn't get um, the fuels to dry out uh, significantly. So again, looking back at our fire season drivers in terms of climate, drought for June and July, and then for all three months, we need above average temperatures and uh, short and long-term precipitation deficits. Um, when we get towards August, it's really short-term precip deficits. And again, that's just related to um, drying out the fuels uh, a little bit earlier than normal. Interesting trends. Uh, we had a triple dip or a three-year La Nina event uh, the past three years. And historically speaking, they're pretty rare. It's only what, the second or third triple dip La Nina we've seen. But we're out of La Nina now, and we are going full-fledged into an El Nino situation. Um, this is going to be a pretty hardcore turnaround in the sea surface temperatures across the equatorial Pacific. That's going to change some global patterns, some global weather patterns. Um, typically, those patterns are, are manifested for us here, mostly in the wintertime. Um, but it will not surprise me one lick if 2023 shakes out to be, globally speaking, the warmest year on record. Um, we've been trending warmer. And with a El Nino in the forecast, uh, we are likely to be warmer on a global scale. So total outlook summary is, again, through June through August, um, kind of encompassing our, our peak fire time. I would say just average large fire potential across the state. Um, signals for near average precipitation during the spring and the summer, you know, we're kind of emerging from the drought right now. So the soils are still dry out there. Stock ponds are low. Uh, so we're going to need some of that extra moisture to just, you know, soak in a little bit. Uh, but then, you know, warmer than average summer. I, I think it's going to be warmer than average summer. I know what the CPC said. Uh, but yeah, if we do see that, you got to think about heat. And then if we get a long duration, you know, 10 plus days of average to well above average temperatures, you can get large fire growth, again, if it's aligned with those climatic factors. But remember, in an average year in South Dakota, we just don't see a lot of fires. Uh, we're kind of an ecosystem. It's all or nothing. Um, you know, we don't. Yeah, it's yeah. You can take the past 20 years of fire data or fire acreage divided by 20 and get an average. But that's pretty meaningless. Most of our um Dry drought years lead to, to big fires, and I'm not necessarily seeing that in the cards right now. So I do expect a slow uh, fire season across the state going into the summer months. But again, uh, I, I want to caution that with, you know, if we start to see, you know, some flash drought or anything starting to emerge of uh, the summer, you, you know, just be aware. Um, always be aware. Just a quick blurb on the short term. We're dry right now. So this is for southwestern South Dakota, kind of encompassing the southwestern climate division. Um, conditions are exceptionally dry. Our ERCs are, are at record levels for the time of the year, and, and that's telling. Um, if for whatever reason we don't get our normal spring rains, man, these fuels are going to dry out even further. So it's we're, we're in a tough situation now. We've seen quite a bit of fire activity so far uh, in April. But, you know, we're going to lead into green up. But again, if our fuels stay dry, if we don't get that those good rains uh, over the next, you know, three to eight weeks, we, we could be in a tough situation. I mean, as always, I'll be, you know, keeping my eye on the forecast and keeping you all apprised of what we got going on. Uh, so that's pretty much all I have to discuss for now. Uh, I really want to stress that 
you know, our, our peak fire season from late June through say early September is heavily dependent upon the precipitation that we get in May and June, heavily dependent on the precip we get in May and June. If we have a dry May and June, we're probably going to have a fire season. If we get normal or above normal moisture in May and June, we're not going to have much of a fire season. We'd be pushing us out until fall. Um, so there's my contact information, um, my blog spot. I, I haven't been using that too much lately, but I have been posting videos on YouTube at SD fire weather is the handle. And of course my Twitter page at SD fire weather. Uh, I hope this was somewhat informative and please let me know if you have any feedback.